Now, I've showed you what I'm talking about. This is what the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association want you to do. And I know this is kind of small, but I know you've all memorized it, right? This is what we do every day, right? You go through this tree. Now, I went through this tree and I counted, and there's eight steps and 45 arrows, okay? And I went to Lee Fleischer and I said, Lee, could you add four more steps so we could have a 12-step program? <laughs> he didn't like that. But this is what you're supposed to be doing. Let's work our way through it. Next. First, you're supposed to divide people into three groups. Next. Then you're supposed to go through this kind of pachinko machine thing. And this is what you do for high risk. You bounce around and you get down to angiogram followed by care dictated by finding and treatment results. Next. For medium risk, you get to, let's see, angiogram followed by care dictated by finding and treatment results. And the low risk people get to, next slide, angiogram followed by, hmm, that seems very similar. Somebody decided to test this out and see. I, let me go back. Go to the next slide. I, I thought that the AHA and ACC tested these things before they published them, but they don't really. They just come up with them. Uh, this was a study done in the VA, published in the American Journal of Cardiology, called Guideline Chaos, Conflicting Recommendations for Perioperative Cardiac Assessment. They took that poster, they stuck it on the wall of the PACU and the APO, and they said, Okay, this is what you're going to do. And they had the pre-op people all try to follow it. And what they found was that the guidelines never agreed on the need for non-invasive testing. There were extreme differences in recommendations. The physicians ignored it and offered more tests. And when applied to real people, nobody could follow this guideline. Okay, next. I recommend something different. Okay, how many of you have gone to a casino? How often do you have a good night at the casino? <laughs> How often does the casino have a good night? Okay. Why does the casino win? The reason the casino wins is they bet on every single person, right? Let's do a thought experiment. I'm going to bring, I'm going to give you 10,000 bucks. And you go to the casino and you go to the floor of all the slot machines. They have a 3% event rate. And you go up to a slot machine, and you can do any test you want on the slot machine. You can do a PTHAL, an angiogram, an MRI, whatever you want to the slot machine. And then you have to bet on one machine. Or you can have the take from every single machine. Well, you know that the casino always wins. That's why they build these nice buildings. Okay? I work at a VA. I know that they don't build these buildings to hand out money. Okay? They build this to take in money. What I'm telling you to do is reduce the risk in every single patient who's at risk. Don't try to be smart. Just reduce every patient's risk. Next slide. Now, does anybody want to be in the placebo group? We need volunteers. If you don't want to volunteer to be in the placebo group, don't do it to your patient. Next slide. Now, what are doctors actually doing? in the real world. This is a study we did at 70 hospitals in 17 countries, 5,000 people coming for cardiac surgery, and we asked the simple question, what are they doing with their drugs? And what you find is that people with known coronary disease, 40% of them are having the beta blocker taken away. Okay, 5% are having it added. You're eight times more likely 